Hey everyone, how's it going? So if there's one Pokemon I get asked again and again and again to do, mostly because people want to see if Ghastly will maintain its reign as the top pre-evolved Pokemon. And the Pokemon I'm asked to do, obviously, you can see by the title, is Dratini. Now, Dragon Knight is a very powerful Pokemon. It's known as a pseudo-legendary, basically meaning it's as powerful as a legendary Pokemon, but evolves and can be caught in the wild like Dratini can. However, Dratini's stats aren't that good at all. In fact, they're way more similar to Bulbasaur than Mewtwo. So right off the bat, we can tell this is going to be a much more challenging run than the last one. And to that end, I want to go right to Brock and show you what happens if you try and battle Brock at minimum battle. Now, like in the Ekans run, Dratini starts with the move Rap. Rap is a very, very cheap move. The way it works is simple. It has an 85% chance to hit, and when it hits, the other Pokemon cannot attack. Rap can last anywhere from 2 to 5 turns, and it just does damage. The two downfalls are if the other Pokemon outspeeds you, or if you get that 15% chance to miss. Now, against Geodude, it's great, because we outspeed Geodude, and even if we miss a little bit, Geodude has a 50-50 chance of using Defense Curl, at level 6, it's going to be doing 1 HP of damage either way, so it doesn't really matter. However, once the Geodude finally gets knocked out, Onyx makes very quick work of Dratini. Not only does it outspeed, since Onyx is actually quite fast, but it took, yes, one was a critical hit, but two tackles, that's all it took, to knock me out. So suffice to say, we're going to have to be at a much higher level. And you might think you would need to be at a high enough level to outspeed the Onyx. There is one problem with doing that, however. Like Mewtwo, Dratini is part of the slow level up group. Now, I often don't talk about level up groups because the vast majority of Pokemon fall into two groups that are quite similar in the long run, at least when talking about level 50. There are differences. Some are faster earlier, some are faster later. But overall, they're similar enough that there isn't a giant time gain or time loss. Dratini, however, being part of the slow group, does add significant time. Because since we can't battle Brock right away, we're going to need to level up, and that takes almost double the time it would for a Pokemon like Squirtle. And that's very, very frustrating to say the least. Especially because it's not guaranteed that I would outspeed Onix to like level... 15 or so, and beyond outspeeding Onyx, I was starting to run into the problem is that I would run out of rap power points because Dratini's next move at level 10 is Thunder Wave. Now, Thunder Wave, Leer, and Rap are a very, very good combination in Generation 1, except Thunder Wave, being an electric move, doesn't affect ground Pokemon like Onyx, so it's useless, and the only attacking move we have is Rap. So, we have 20 power points to knock out the two rock Pokemon. How the heck are we going to be able to do it? Well, funny enough, at level 13, I realized something. What I realized is that if I used three Leers, and I should be clear what I'm saying here, not just three Leers, but three Leers where Brock doesn't use Defense Curl. Ideally, one of the tackles would miss, but I essentially need him to use Tackle three times. Rap will do... I think two damage or so, more than one. You can see a noticeable difference, and thus that would preserve power points for Onyx. Of course, I'm still not able to outspeed the Onyx. However, Bide does not work correctly when you use Rap. It only counts the very last, I believe, attack in order to calculate damage, which is incredibly useful. Plus, we can use those turns to spam six Leer. And amazingly, if we get good luck from the Onyx, meaning not too many screeches followed by Tackle, we can actually win with a normal move and being outsped. I'm almost positive this is the first and only time with a normal attacking move we have won while still being outsped by Onyx. That's, uh, that's actually pretty good for Dratini. But it's not exactly smooth sailing from here on out. We do get the use of a TM that a lot of people forget about, TM-12 Water Gun. Yes, Water Gun is a TM in Generation 1, and is available as soon as you get into Mount Moon on the left. Now, 
Honestly, we don't need this TM. I think I use it just a few times. It's useful if you encounter any Geodudes. It is almost as fast just to use Water Gun and gain the extra experience points than it is to run away. And I do battle the Hiker I almost always skip because you can just use Water Gun three times. Think about it, we are with the slow group, so we need to level up more to try and maintain pace with other Pokemon. But the biggest reason I want it, honestly, is for safety. Rap can miss, you can run out of power points, and then the battle is over. With Water Gun, at least I can still attack after I run out of Rap. But one battle that's not a problem if we skip ahead a little bit is Misty. Now remember how I said Thunder Wave, Leer, and Rap are a great combo? Well, let's watch that in action. Thunder Wave turn 1, Starmie was out speeding, Leer turns 2 and 3, then I use Rap, Staryu never gets another chance to attack. Try that again, it worked so well. Thunder Wave turn 1, X Defend, so I have to use one extra Leer. Starmie's water moves are resisted by Dratini, and Tackle doesn't do all that much damage, and then I can just use Rap, so long as I don't miss too many times, it's a pretty free battle and one of the easiest Misty fights that I can remember in a very long time. And herein lies one of Dratini's biggest strengths, its resistances. It resists water, fire, and grass, plus the only thing it is weak to in Generation 1 is ice, of which there aren't many or almost any before the Elite Four. And with that said, how does Rival 2's fight look? Well, if you get sufficient luck it looks okay, I paralyze Pidgeotto turn 1, but it does a ton of damage. I use a Leer, but the biggest issue is that Pidgeotto and Rattata both know Quick Attack. And although I actually do outspeed Rattata, Quick Attack goes first. So that partially nullifies the cheapness of Rap, and I don't have a ton of HP going into the final three Pokemon. Abra doesn't really count because it can't attack. Rattata does use Quick Attack on the first turn, but thankfully that's the only time. I do outspeed like I mentioned and I knock it out. And then Squirtle I just need to hit every single rap and I win. So as I said earlier, rap is very cheap. So of course I'm going to keep it for the rest of the run, right? No. After I finish up with Roots 24 and 25, I'm going to head to Vermilion and get Body Slam. But why J Rhodes? Why Body Slam over rap? Well there's a bunch of factors. One is the luck factor inherent to rap. It misses 15% of the time. Two is Dratini's low speed. Rap is only great when you outspeed, and that's going to become less and less common, although I have agility, but still. The biggest factor, other than the luck, is the wasted time. Rap is really slow. Every individual attack of Rap only does 15 damage, while Body Slam does 85. That means it takes six hits of Rap, to do the same amount of damage as one body slam, plus all those extra text boxes, it really adds up. It just doesn't make sense to continue using rap. Yes, it can be cheap, and I would be able to do a couple things a little easier, but at the cost of a lot of time, and so it's just simply not worth it. And you can see how effective body slam is when I battle rival number three. Now I get some pretty bad luck against Pidgeotto, but not awful luck, because it doesn't use sand attack. It does get a crit with gust, and on turn four uses quick attack. But what was I doing the first three turns? Well, I was using agility. This is both to raise my speed and to use, say it with me, the badge boost glitch. I know you guys were disappointed I didn't get to use it last run, but don't worry, it makes a massive comeback. For those of you who are new, just know my attack is getting raised, so I will be doing more damage so long as I don't level up. Nonetheless, Pidgeotto still isn't a one-hit KO, and I'm left with 14 HP for the final three Pokémon. Not looking good. I outspeed the Raticate, obviously, and it is a one-hit KO. Ditto for the Kadabra, no pun intended there. War Turtle would have been a range if it used Tackle. I get the Paralysis, but it goes for Tail Whip, so it doesn't matter, and I'm able to knock it out next turn. And if you were wondering why three agility, that was the number I needed to knock out Raticate in one hit. Essentially what's going on is every time your stats are modified, or actually to back it up just a step further, when you collect badges in the first three generations, stats are modified depending on the badge. So the Boulder Badge boosts your attack by 12.5%. That it's supposed to do. However, when your stats are modified, that 12.5% is reapplied for whatever reason. 
This is both when I use a positive move like Agility, or even when a move like Tail Whip or Leer is used against me. This is only a problem in the first generation, and in terms of why I use it, I have no choice. You saw War Turtle was about to use Tail Whip there. The badge boost glitch is going to come into play whether I want it to or not, so might as well just use it to the fullest advantage. Now, after I've defeated Rival Number 3, I, as you see, head to Lieutenant Surge. The only move I worry about from Voltorb is Sonic Boom because I have just around 60 HP, so that's a third of my HP. So far, so good as I set up 3 agility. However, Body Slam is still not a one-hit KO. And then, of course, I get punished with a Sonic Boom. I use Bubble Beam to knock it out because it's a quicker animation. I'm kind of kidding, although that is true. But I need to point out that I level up here. So while the boosts from agility are still in effect, my additional badge boosts in attack are no longer in effect. I get a Generation 1 miss, a 1 in 256 chance that a 100% accuracy move will miss. Body Slam has 100% accuracy, yet I miss. And it hits me with Growl. Beautiful. Well, Pikachu is pretty low defense, but it's still not a one-hit KO. Thankfully, it doesn't use Quick Attack, and I knock it out the next turn. But I'm pretty worried about Raichu. And for good reason, while it doesn't do anything the first couple turns, it uses Thunderbolt, and pretty much any attack it uses would have knocked me out. Thank goodness it goes for Growl, and I'm able to use Bubble Beam and knock it out. But boy, this is a battle I thought would be a complete cakewalk. And because I leveled up and then got a Generation 1 miss, it made it quite a bit more tricky. But I still did win on my first try, so obviously it wasn't that bad. Speaking of which, that's a great way to describe the next section of the game. Nothing is really too much of a problem. We have Thunderbolt, so the Slowpoke aren't a problem. We have Bubble Beam, so the Rock Pokemon aren't a problem. And we can head to Celadon City. Now, as per usual, I plan to do Rocket Hideout, get Fly go to Lavender Town, and finally battle Erica. So far, so good, but Giovanni, yes, Giovanni, ended up being difficult. Why? Because I ran out of potions. Now, this is something that happens occasionally. Kangaskhan can be kind of difficult, and I'm slow, and I don't have great defense, so this was an example of that. And because I didn't have enough potions, I would just have a lot of trouble knocking out the Kangaskhan before it knocked me out. Even with potions, it would have been a problem. Eventually, I figured out the best way to do it was to set up three agility against the Onyx. Yes, it does mean Onyx will attack, but Onyx has the least probability of doing a lot of damage. Bubble Beam easily one-hit KOs both Onyx and Rhyhorn. And then hope for Rage. If you get Rage, it's a win, or a Comet Punch miss. Unfortunately, due to a mistake that happened, well, before, but I'll talk about it in two seconds, I battled Giovanni and beat him three separate times. What was the mistake? Just like in the last video, I forgot to heal in the Celadon City Pokemon Center. So when I went to dig out, I didn't go back to Celadon City. Thankfully, I healed in Lavender, and I do need to go there, but I have to walk back to Celadon as opposed to flying, and that costs a little bit of time. But something that doesn't take too much time is Rival Number 4, typically the easiest battle of the rival battles, and this is no exception. Thunderbolt is a one-hit KO against Pidgeotto. Bubble Beam is a one-hit KO against Growlithe. But I actually don't want Bubble Beam. I would have gone to the Celadon Pokemon and taught Ice Beam. So perhaps Growlithe would have been a two-hit KO, but Execute got a chance to use Hypnosis. And that just wastes a bunch of time because it's a two-hit KO with Body Slam. However, eventually you wake up and knock it out because its best attack is Barrage, which is not very good. But this was very concerning. The level 20 Kadabra outsped me. Yikes, I think Geodude was the only time that's ever happened. That's, that's really bad. But because I'm part of the slow level up group, I'm at a lower level than I otherwise would be. I missed click against Wartortle. Don't think it was a one hit KO anyway, but didn't matter. It used Bite. I have plenty of HP left, and that is rival number four. Now, I'm not going to show individual battles, but the Pokemon Tower I did struggle with, and this is as good a time as any to talk about this issue. Let's take a look at Dratini's move pool quite quickly. Its best moves are special moves. Its special is pretty low, and that's why Dratini is a little bit deceptive. You think it would be super easy to use because it has so many options, but it doesn't have the stats to completely take advantage of that. For now, though, we're going to change one of our options. We're going to get rid of Bubble Beam and teach Ice Beam and battle Erica. 
There really isn't much to say about Erica. Thankfully, the worst thing that could happen is being put to sleep and then Petal Dance from Vileplume or Razor Leaf from Victory Bell. Well, I get poisoned on turn one by Victory Bell, so that pretty much guarantees a victory. Little nerve wracking when Tangela used Bind because Bind plus Poison is not a great time. Didn't last too long. And then I get another Generation 1 miss. Goodness, I'm getting some real luck with that. <laughs> but nonetheless, I'm able to knock out Vileplume. And that is it for the easy part of this run. From here on out, at least for the next little bit, it's quite difficult. I mean, think about it. The next gym, Koga. We have Pokemon over 10 levels higher than Dratini. And I don't have great stats to start with. Plus, unlike some other Pokemon, I don't get Psychic or Dig or anything that is super great against the Poison Pokemon. So if we see some Koga battles, I don't even, like it's not even close. Like we're talking several hit KO for each Pokemon and I don't even make it past Muck. Like, this was totally not gonna work. And because of that, I really don't have many options. I mean, I could go battle some trainers. There are plenty of them left to battle. Or, I could see if Sylph Company would work better and try and battle Rival Fievel. Now, Rival Fievel is tough. However, I do have excellent coverage against his team. So I was pretty convinced that I would win, and it took a little bit more leveling up, but I was correct that Rival Fievel was, in fact, the way to go. Having said that, I ended up leveling up seven more levels, which, if you know how slow the level ups take, that isn't entirely a quick process, but there are plenty of trainers. I used the Fighting Dojo, I used some of the scientists because they give money, and I bought some vitamins to try and max out my stats as much as I can. And now it's time to battle Rival Fievel for the final time, hopefully. Once again, I'm going to set up three agilities, both for speed and for the badge boost glitch. I've leveled up in such a way that I will not level up in the middle of this battle, which is nice. I don't get a sand attack. I mean, I do, but it fails. However, I get a critical hit quick attack before I can attack, which is brutal. And there's almost no way this is going to be the successful battle, but at least we'll be able to see what I'm up against. Growlithe is a one-hit KO with Body Slam, although I got a crit. I missed the range on Execute, and it uses Leech Seed. Not great, not the end of the world. But the most important thing, I outspeed Alakazam, obviously, and it's a one-hit KO with Body Slam. If it weren't for Alakazam, I probably wouldn't have had to level up at all, but Alakazam is a very annoying Pokemon to face. And now Blastoise, it's a two-hit KO. Leech Seed takes away some health. It goes for Bite, which is the best move it could have used. I still knock it out. So that was pretty good. On 39 HP, I'm able to knock out the rest of Rival Fievel's team. Now I'm going to skip Giovanni because there's no real point. Very, very easy battle. And I'm going to get to Koga because how do things look now that I'm at a much higher level? Well, coughing has much higher defense than special. So I go for Ice Beam. It goes for Smog and misses. Knock it out with Ice Beam. That's good. Now I do want to boost my attack and defense. So I use Agility. I know, weird thing to say. Muck does raise its evasiveness, which isn't amazing, but it is the best Pokemon to set up against, I find. And I actually get some pretty insane luck. Despite the fact it would have done some pretty great damage after that X attack, I'm able to hit Body Slam, paralyze it. Does get off Poison Gas, but all in all, that's the best move I could be hit with. Then I get a critical hit. 100 HP for the final two Pokemon plus Badge Boost. This should be doable. I go for Body Slam since my attack has been raised, does about half. Coughing goes for Smokescreen, which is the reason I don't set up against Coughing. Hits, and I'm able to hit it with Body Slam the next turn, but I'm kind of worried now for Weezing. I wasn't sure which would do more damage. I go for Ice Beam, maybe I'll get the Miracle Freeze. Doesn't happen, it goes for Smog and misses. I go for Body Slam, that was definitely the play- Oh, okay, okay. So the badge boosts ended up playing an integral part, but not from an offensive standpoint, from a defensive standpoint. Lieutenant Surge gives you the increases in defense. Weird, I know, but that's how it works. And because of that, I am able to tank self-destruct on five HP. Not bad at all. 
And now that I've defeated Koga, I can choose whether I want to go back to Saffron and battle Sabrina, no, or whether I want to go to Blaine and battle his fire Pokemon, yes please. Even though Blaine's Pokemon are at a higher level, the fact that I resist fire makes him a far easier choice. Now I do want to address this quickly, as I head to Cinnabar and make my way through the Pokemon Mansion, J-Rose, why not teach Surf against Blaine? Why stick with Ice Beam? If you remember my past video on Mewtwo, I talk about how Ice is not resisted by fire, it is neutral. And we are going to get the TM for Blizzard in Pokemon Mansion, but why not just teach Surf? I don't understand, you're making this way harder on yourself. Well, in any other generation, that's exactly what I would do, but not Generation 1, because the Move Deleter, which allows you to get rid of HM moves, wasn't invented till Generation 2. So if I teach Surf, it is stuck there forever. And although this is getting a little ahead of ourselves, if we think ahead to the Elite Four, Thunderbolt for Loralee, Blizzard for Lance, Agility for Badge Boost Glitch, and a physical move for Alakazam, it doesn't make sense to get rid of any of those moves in favor of Sir. And thus, while Blaine will be a tad more difficult, we sacrifice some short-term pain for some long-term gain. I hope. But with that, let's talk about Blaine's actual battle. I'm gonna set up three agility, I know, boring, same thing, but it works. I get one Leer, so that's an additional badge boost for my other stats. The one stat that is not being boosted is special, that's what I get from defeating Blaine. After I fully sit up, I use Body Slam, it gets a critical hit, that didn't matter. Looking good so far. And I get another critical hit against Ponyta, that's actually really unlikely, my base speed is pretty low, but I will take it. I think that one did matter, I think Ponyta was a range. However, my good luck runs out against Rapidash, Body Slam does half, Growl, that's the one move I didn't want to see. Body Slam is now doing... I don't know, about a third, and Rapidash uses Stomp. I've been hit with Leer, so that does pretty good damage, and I use Ice Beam, but now Arcanine is going to be awful. I start off by using two Ice Beams, Arcanine doesn't attack. I then switch to Body Slam, which does a little less, but I want that Paralysis. Attack number four is a critical hit, but as you can see, Blaine is healing quite a bit, so I haven't actually done all that much damage overall. After what feels like a million body slams, I finally get the paralysis. At that point, our canine decides to go for takedown. I was worried it would knock me out. It doesn't. But thanks to the recoil damage, one more ice beam is all I need to knock it out. And we've defeated Blaine. And the significance of that, aside from it being a gym badge, is that I get the special badge boost, meaning the badge boost glitch will also raise my special. That is key for Sabrina because she has very powerful special attacks and it is not a guarantee I outspeed or one-hit KO any of her Pokemon. On that note, Kadabra outspeeds me, goes for Psychic, but I don't get a special drop, that is huge. I use just one agility for actual speed, and I knock out Kadabra. Now, I set up two agilities on Mr. Mime. It goes for Barrier, then Double Slap. Not thrilled about the Barrier, but whatever. Body Slam does just under half damage. It misses with Double Slap, I go for another Body Slam, it hits with Confusion, but I'm able to knock it out. Eh, this isn't looking great. Now I really need to one hit KO the Venomoth, I even get the critical hit, still no, and a critical hit is more powerful than Badge Boost, but it gets paralyzed and doesn't attack. I'm not going to complain. But don't worry, speaking of infinitesimal odds, I get my third Gen 1 miss. What in the world is going on here? And I've only even shown like, what, 12 or so battles? This is insane. Thankfully, Alakazam uses Psybeam, otherwise I would have lost. But don't worry, as long as I won Hikeo with Body Slam, I win. Oh great, I lose. Beautiful. Alright, new plan. Let's set up against Kadabra because I'm annoyed and whatever. For whatever reason, after the first Psybeam, it decides not to attack. Okay, great, that will theoretically give me more HP for Alakazam. I knock out the Kadabra, I get a critical hit against the Mr. Mime, I don't think it mattered, but I don't really care. Now I don't get anything special against Venomoth, but it decides to go for Poison Powder, very much a fan of that decision. Now I just need no Gen 1 miss, please. There we go, oh Psybeam is perfect, oh my god. Alright, just don't hit yourself, oh my god. Okay, Reflect is good. Just don't... Okay, thank you. Thank you. Wow. Wow. That... 
For a battle where I arguably got some really good luck, I'm pretty salty. You know? I, I don't know why. I think it's just the fact I get to Alakazam, and then just all my luck just evaporates. Like, holy moly, that was insane. But I did win, so maybe I should be a little less salty. And you know what? You know what will make me feel a lot less salty? A good old easy battle against Giovanni. Never do I lose to Giovanni. I have Ice Beam. This should be simple. All right, so he leads off with Rhyhorn, which doesn't have great attacks. I'm going to set up three agilities and sweep through the rest of the team with Ice Beam. Go Dratini. So I do get a couple Fury attacks. No big deal. I should be fine. So this is one, two, three. Whoa, oh, oh, okay. Oh, and now I'm paralyzed. All right. Thankfully, I still have the agilities, so I outspeed, but that's not good. Even with three agility, I don't outspeed Nidoking, but it uses Poison Sting, and it's also not a one-hit KO. But I should outspeed Rhydon. This should be fine. It goes for Thrash. Oh my god. Oh my god. I lost to Giovanni. All right, you know what? Whatever. That was pretty insane bad luck. Maybe those Ice Beams are ranges? I don't know. But you know what? Who cares? Because I have Blizzard, and why am I not using Blizzard? It's base 120, 90 accuracy. Like, what, what am I doing? Just use Blizzard and win. Well, I did just that. I actually did lose once, but that was entirely my fault. Fun fact, without badge boost, Rhydon, even with Blizzard, is not a one-hit KO. And I used Body Slam on the second hit, didn't knock it out, and then it knocked me out with Stomp. So that was great. And so I'll risk the 10% chance of it missing over the 100% chance I get knocked out with a freaking stomp. I mean, oh my god. But guess what? Guess what? In this battle, I miss with the blizzard. And I think Body Slam would have knocked it out. I, I just can't win. I just can't win. I mean, I did win. I literally did win. But like, wow. Everyone says, J Rose, you get such good luck. Guess what? It all evens out. Now is bad luck run. And we're doing relatively well, despite this really bad luck. I mean, we've made it through the regular season, or almost made it through the regular season. The playoffs are on the horizon, and we have a great new player in Blizzard to help us out. The question is, will our final game against rival number six be the game that gives our team the confidence to make it past the Elite Four, or really makes them question whether this year is their year? Let's find out. Well, I lose, but not in a way that bothered me. And that's why I'm not gonna bother narrating. You see, when you're gonna rely on badge boosting, you need to make sure you're not gonna level up in the middle of battles, like I mentioned earlier. That's exactly what happened and the reason I lost. And so all I really need to do is go battle a few more trainers, level up, and then try and redo the battle. I'll not only be at a higher level, but I'll get the boost in all my stats for the entire battle, which is what I want. Of course, I'm gonna set up three agility against Pidgeot. It has quick attack and wing attack, very poor attacks. Nonetheless, my defense is so bad that it's still doing decent damage. And would you look at that? 10% chance to miss, I miss, and another quick attack. Okay, what is going on in this run? Come on, what else can go wrong? Thankfully, after that, we get one, two, three, and four one-hit KOs in a row before we get to Alakazam. Will this be a one-hit KO with Body Slam? No, no it's not, but it uses Reflect, so that's pretty good. Now I just need, I don't know, I should be fine versus Blastoise. Well, to be honest, maybe I would have been knocked out by Hydro Pump, but it goes for Skull Bash. That's a two-turn move. Knock it out with Thunderbolt, and I am just not getting great luck. I am still winning in spite of that, but the luck is awful. But when it comes to the Elite Four, luck isn't really going to be the issue. Because I forgot something. Something really important. Do you know what that thing was? Do you know she's pronounced Laura Lie? I've been saying Laura Lee. No, I'm kidding. Um, Laura Lee uses ice Pokemon. Yeah, and they know ice moves. 
and I have bad stats? I think you see where this is going. What in the world did I think was going to happen when I tried to battle her at my current level? She also will always use Aurora Beam because of her good AI. So yeah, while I have a bunch of rare candies, I think it's time to do a little bit of training. So I'm going to go do that very quickly, level up a bunch, and then try to, you know, not faint in two turns. Alright, so I used all my rare candies. I'm at level 70. Cue Ice Theme, and let's battle Laurelie. By this point, my strategy was pretty consistent against her. Turn 1, use Thunderbolt. Dugong uses Aurora Beam. Turn 2, knock it out with Thunderbolt. Cloyster is a one-hit KO with Thunderbolt, which is good. Then, against Slowbro, I'm going to use three Agilities, which will help against the final two Pokémon. And hope it doesn't use Growl. Not a big deal unless it uses two. Now, you'll see that Dratini learns Hyper Beam. Hyper Beam in Generation 1 is very cheap. It does not require recharge if it knocks out a Pokémon. That's incredibly useful since I want to knock out Pokémon in one hit anyway, but I need to be extra certain it's going to be a one-hit KO. Speaking of which, Lapras will not be. However, Blizzard should not knock me out, and I should win the battle so long as nothing crazy happens. Not bad. Bruno is really, really easy, and I will describe the strategy as pressing the A button a few times, but there's technically slightly more to it. Machamp can attack because it's not a 1 KO, but essentially the idea is to use Blizzard, it missed, but that's okay. And then you just gotta use Blizzard, 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 and, and guess what? This will shock you. Another Blizzard. Hyper Beam would have been fine, but who cares? Now we move on to Agatha, and she is awful. And let me explain just prior to showing you the battle. Agatha's Pokemon, at least her Gengar, have super high special and super low defense, but the only usable physical move I have is Hyper Beam, which doesn't affect them. Meaning I need to use Blizzard, which is a 3-hit KO against the first Gengar. That gives it plenty of opportunity to use Confuse Ray and Hypnosis. And now let's talk about this battle. I use Blizzard, pretty good. It uses Nightshade, you know what, whatever, not great, but good enough. But here, I miss with Blizzard, it hits with Confuse Ray, beautiful. Now I recognize regardless, it's going to be a 2 hit KO whether I use Blizzard or Thunderbolt, and Thunderbolt can't miss. So I go for Thunderbolt and I hit, and Agatha heals. Okay, fine, I'll go for Thunderbolt again. Agatha heals. Again. Now I hit myself in Confusion, but thankfully Agatha attacks randomly, and she uses Confuse Ray again. I decide to set up an agility, both for speed and badge boost, but of course, another Confuse Ray. At this point, I'm just like, whatever, I'll just try and get another badge boost. And she goes for Dream Eater. Okay, that's the best case scenario. I don't snap out of Confusion, but I get a critical hit with Blizzard, so not bad. All can be undone if Golbat uses Haze, however. I opt to go for the more reliable Thunderbolt. I don't know if that was a range, but I get a critical hit, so who cares? And that's Golbat down. Against Haunter, Blizzard does just under three quarters. It goes for Dream Eater. Perfect. Once again, I finish it off with Thunderbolt. Now I just need to make sure I knock out the Arbok before it can use Glare. That's really bad. Seems like a perfect opportunity to use Hyper Beam. It's a one-hit KO, and now I just have the final Gengar. Can't put me to sleep, so I should be fine. Unless I miss with Blizzard. It uses Nightshade. Blizzard doesn't do half, I get confused, and I hit myself in confusion. Yay. So, I feel like you guys needed to see that to understand that this is one of the best attempts versus Agatha. Most of my runs end at the first Gengar, and there's nothing I can do aside from leveling up an absurd amount to making Blizzard a 2 at KO, but it shouldn't be necessary, it's just luck-based. As long as Agatha doesn't use the perfect moves at the perfect time, I should be fine. But because, you know, just everything went wrong. Blizzard would miss. Confuse Ray would hit the worst possible turn. Golbat would use Haze. Arbok, Hyper Beam would miss and it would use Glare. It just always seemed to be an excuse. But I'm still pretty sure at this level I should be able to win. So let's try again. New music. Laurelie, take two. 
Now, this battle goes identically to the other Laura Lee battle, with the one exception being Slowbro uses a water gun and I don't get any growls. But if I get three growls, although I can't use Hyper Beam and Jinx becomes a two-hit KO, Lapras, because of badge boost glitching, will become a one-hit KO. So essentially, as long as Dugong or Jinx slash Lapras doesn't get a critical hit or freeze you in the case of Jinx or Lapras, you should win this battle every single time. And that's what I like. I like when I have a strategy that I have contingencies and I win. Now, after we defeat Laurelee, I move on to Bruno. And you might be wondering, J Rose, why even bother showing Bruno at this point? And the honest answer is, and I'm curious to hear your guys' feedback on this, I like when a reviewer or whatever shows long stretches of footage without cuts. I mean, it just feels like a more natural experience. And the Elite Four is not a long part of the game. It's a very important part of the game. If I can show the entire battle, of course, it also proves I don't save. But I just think it just makes it flow better. That's my honest opinion. But break time is over. It's time to battle Agatha. So far, I've yet to actually beat her in 11 attempts. So let's hope I've learned enough from those 11 that lucky number 12 will be the attempt. Well, already I do something a little different. I'm going to set up one agility. I get hit with Confuse Ray, of course. And thankfully, I don't hit myself in Confusion and set up another one. And Gengar really wants to make sure I'm confused, so it uses Confuse Ray again. But now Blizzard is guaranteed to be a two-hit KO, which is the purpose of doing that. Once again, I don't hit myself in Confusion and use Blizzard. Agatha may have a problem with her A button because she uses Confuse Ray again inexplicably. Not gonna complain. And the timing couldn't be more perfect. I snap out of Confusion, knock it out with Blizzard. Golbat should be a one-hit KO with Thunderbolt. Again, I get a critical hit, so I'm not sure, but not gonna complain about the result. Blizzard does about three quarters to Haunter and Hypnosis. Wonderful. Well, I don't wake up turn one and Confuse Ray. Even better, asleep and confused. All right, not waking up again, and really, love Confuse Ray, do you, Agatha? Oh my gosh. I wake up on this turn, and good timing, Haunter was going to use Dream Eater, so okay, maybe luck is on my side? <laughs> no, no, it's not. I hit myself in Confusion and another Hypnosis. All the good luck evaporated. But I wake up turn one, and she swaps into Arbok. Okay. Well, I am still confused and I hit myself in confusion. Arbok goes for glare and it misses. One in four chance that opponent's status moves miss. I'll take it. Snap out of confusion and hyper beam. Down goes Arbok. Oh my God. Haunter is in range to be knocked out with Thunderbolt. And now we just have the final Gengar. Please don't confuse me. All right, turn one Blizzard. And of course, of course, what was I thinking? But it did about half. One more Blizzard should knock it out. Yes! No! At least she used Dream Eater. Please don't... Okay, okay. Yes! We have defeated Agatha. Finally. This should be smooth sailing from here on in. This was the obstacle. This is the hurdle. Crown me champion. I'm going to say it right now. Unless I get some insanely crazy bad luck. This should be it. I should win because Lance shouldn't be a problem whatsoever. The strategy is incredibly simple. Use Thunderbolt on Gyarados because I outspeed. I can set up one agility or two. I just really want to outspeed that Aerodactyl. And Dragonair will go for Dragon Rage because it thinks it's super effective despite the fact it's a set damage move. Amazing. And now I just need Blizzard not to miss. I get no misses and we're going to move on to the champion. Now, I have had trouble with the rival in some battles, but I'm at a much higher level. I have a strategy in mind that I think is going to work really, really well. So, no need to stall any further. Here is Dratini's final battle. So, turn one, I set up an agility. I need to outspeed Alakazam, so I really did need to use agility regardless. I'd love to have set up another one, but Pidgeot goes for Sky Attack meaning it's time to use Blizzard. Sky Attack will do extreme damage. I don't want that. Thankfully, Blizzard doesn't miss, and down goes Pidgeot. Now, the million-dollar question, does Hyper Beam knock out Alakazam in one hit? Yes. Yes, it does. It also has a chance to miss, which it didn't do. I think we're good. Rhydon should be a one-hit KO with Blizzard. It is. 
Arcanine I thought would be a two hit KO. It wouldn't have been. I get a critical hit, so it would have been a three hit KO, but won't complain about that critical hit. He uses Roar, and I can easily knock it out with Thunderbolt. Executor should be a two hit KO. I miss. No, Hypnosis, it misses. Okay, good, good. Please don't miss this one. It does not. Barrage, which does next to nothing. I knock it out, I win. Blastoise has Blizzard, but it won't knock me out in one hit. This should be good. Thunderbolt, in fact, almost one hit KOs it. This time, the rival has a full restore, so I'll use another Thunderbolt. Now, Blizzard, I tank it on 65. No. No. No! Are you... What? Oh, God. That... That's the battle. You can't unfreeze in Gen 1 unless you're hit by a fire move. That's it. That's it. I just lost. I lost to a 10% chance of freeze. Are you, are you kidding me? I mean, you now see why I made the rival have Blastoise, so it had Blizzard, but like... Give me a break! What else could go wrong in this battle? Okay, okay. Bad luck. That's the fun of Pokemon. Sometimes crazy good things happen, sometimes crazy bad things happen. It all is part of the story. And the final chapter has yet to be written. Let's change up the music again. Let's battle Laurelie. And the same thing happens in this battle. Actually, I get a critical hit, but otherwise, same thing you've already seen twice before. The only reason that I am so annoyed with losing is how luck-based Agatha is. Laurely, Bruno, and Lance are pretty much gimmies. Agatha is not even like skill-based challenge, it's just pure luck, and that annoys me to no end. Because my options are either play the Agatha lottery, or level up beyond a point where I really need to, because of how inherently lucky Agatha is. And if Dratini knew Psychic or Dig, she would be pretty easy. It sucks. All the moves Dratini learns, none of them are super effective against the Ghost Pokemon. But I actually do want to legitimately talk about Bruno here. We don't see this too much, but his Machamp actually does attack and uses Submission. And it comes very close to knocking me out. I still win, don't get me wrong. But like, Bruno coming close to knocking me out is like, really impressive for Bruno. So that's cool. But, time to go, battle Agatha, let's hope for the best. This time I opt to go for Blizzard because if the champion can freeze, maybe I can. Nope, but Gengar switches out, that's actually pretty good. I don't want to set up against Golbat because of the Haze problem, so I use Blizzard, get a critical hit, don't think it mattered, down goes Golbat. Now here is some great luck. Blizzard comes close to knocking out Gengar, Agatha uses a Super Potion. Now I get pretty greedy. I go for an agility. I'm almost punished with the hypnosis, but it misses. I'm like, okay, okay, we're good. And I knock it out. Thankfully, now Haunter will be a two-hit KO, so that was important. Or maybe not, I get a critical hit and it doesn't knock it out, but I think critical hits ignore badge boosts. Once again, Agatha heals, so I might actually do this damageless. Not complaining about that. Now, I was concerned because I didn't use two agility that Hyper Beam wouldn't be a one-hit KO, and if it's not, I have to recharge, so I opt to test it out and go for Blizzard. Hyper Beam definitely would have been a one-hit KO. Thankfully, I don't get punished with a glare, just a bite, and I knock it out with Thunderbolt. Now I just need no Confuse Ray, and I should be fine. Unfortunately, I've actually run out of Blizzard, so that's not great. Gengar uses Toxic, not a big deal. Thunderbolt, all right, oh, a heal. Okay, I'll use another Thunderbolt. And she healed again. Toxic is starting to rack up. Oh my goodness, is this going to knock me out? Thankfully, and I'm surprised to say this, Gengar goes for Nightshade. It is very close, but managed to win. Wow, wow. I was happy when I saw Toxic and it almost cost me dearly. Just Agatha, brutal. But thankfully, we get rewarded with a very, very easy, consistent lance battle. Uh-oh. Okay, used barrier. Another... No. Oh my... All right. Wow. I don't have words for this anymore. Like, two consecutive blizzard misses? Thank goodness it didn't use hyper beam. 
and that slam didn't knock me out and yeah those badge boosts probably gave me enough defense to tank that slam like what is going on but all right all right we're back at the champion we just need to not be frozen by blastoise and it should be fine all right pidgeot turn one agility it uses mirror move and that's fine turn two agility and it goes for sky attack i would have liked to set up one more but okay fine please don't miss blizzard once again i don't miss and down goes pidgeot there's also a 10 percent chance hyper beam could miss but it doesn't alakazam has fainted as well and there's my first miss best pokemon to miss against ride on goes for horn drill which can't affect me i don't miss again down goes ride on blizzard would be a two hit ko against arcanine it goes for takedown not great but whatever I use Thunderbolt, and now I just need some decent Executor luck. I should be fine. And I miss again turn one with Blizzard. What's going on with Executor? And it hits with Hypnosis. Beautiful. All right, Asleep turn one, Barrage misses. Okay. Asleep turn two and Stomp, less okay. I wake up and Stomp. I'm not actually... Am I going to be even able to knock out Blastoise now? And I miss again with Blizzard. <laughs> Seriously, what's... All right, Barrage... Whatever, it doesn't matter. I need to get a critical hit against Blastoise. Okay, it comes down to luck. Beautiful. Blizzard does significant damage, another barrage, and I need Hyper Beam to hit. It does. Okay. Now, maybe that extra agility will be enough, or I'll get a crit, or I'll lose. Or, or Blizzard could miss for Blastoise. That would be nice, too. Or, you know, none of the above. All right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. So that's this video. Thanks for watching. No, I'm kidding. I mean, listen. It's frustrating, it is. But like, the thing is, while I get extremely frustrated, it it's just, I see it always as a journey and not a destination. I mean, let's face it, in 99% of these videos, we all know what the outcome is. I'm gonna win, I'm gonna find a way. Whether it's leveling up a bunch, whether it's having to use double team, there's probably a way. The question is, what did it take to get there? How consistent was it? And did crazy stuff happen that is really frustrating for me, but for you guys watching it, it might be quite hilarious. I mean, listen, sure, these difficult sections are entirely bad luck, but, you know, still kind of funny. I get it. And I don't think I'm particularly good at Pokemon. One thing I think I am, though, is I'm persistent. If I have a goal in mind, which is beating this game with Dratini, starting at level 70, I am going to do that. And... I am not going to allow a couple crazy outcomes versus the rival or Agatha to deter me. So I've talked over the Laura Lee and Bruno battles. They're the same. You've seen them enough times already. Let's talk about Agatha. Please let this be the last time I battle her. Once again, I opt to go for Blizzard strats. I get a Dream Eater. Okay, that's fine. I go for Thunderbolt since it's not going to knock it out anyway. And Gengar uses a Super Potion. That scared me a little bit, so I decide to go for Blizzard, another Dream Eater, and I can knock it out with Thunderbolt. So no damage versus Gengar number one. That is pretty good, but I didn't get to set up any agilities. It's risky to set up against Golbat, but I have to. I'm going to use one agility, goes for Wing Attack, good, and I knock it out with Thunderbolt. Don't forget, if he used Haze, it would be like losing two badge boosts, which would be awful. I miss with Blizzard versus Haunter, but it goes for Dream Eater, okay. I hit with Blizzard, goes for Dream Eater again, I knock out Haunter. This time, I go for Hyper Beam knowing it'll knock out the Arbok. I was being silly the previous battle. And just don't give me horrible luck, Final Gengar. Come on, please, please. All right, Blizzard hits, I get Toxic. Uh-oh, we've seen this story before. And a critical hit. That's the j -Rose 11 luck we're used to seeing in these videos. And now... As long as I don't get absurdly bad luck against Lance, I mean, frankly, I kind of already did, and I still won, we should be fine. So we're going to do Thunderbolt, Agility, Dragon Rage, Agility, Dragon Rage, and you guys love my count impression for some reason, so one, two, three, four A presses. <laughs> Actually, I just tap the A button like a billion times when I'm at the Elite Four, so like 100,000 A presses. But whatever, that's not the point, we're back. And like the old saying goes, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me three times, this video is over and I'm gonna say it's impossible. 
and we're all just gonna have to live with that because I'm just seriously done with the Agatha lottery. But all right, let's do it. Turn one, agility. Wing attack, not as good as mirror move, but okay. Turn two, agility. Sky attack. All right, I gotta go for Blizzard here. I don't know if Thunderbolt would be a one-hit KO, and I don't want to test it out because sky attack would be very bad. I knock out Pidgeot. Thankfully, one thing I have been lucky with is I haven't missed a single Hyper Beam versus Alakazam. This is not an exception. That's two. And here's where I decide to try something else. Rhydon isn't as much of a threat. I'm gonna set up a third agility. Try and knock out Blastoise in one hit. It goes for Leer. Actually wouldn't have been the worst thing if that hit some more badge boosts, but whatever. Blizzard misses. Oh, and it goes for Tail Whip. Okay, you know what? Fine. I hit with Blizzard, and now I have double the badge boosts. Let's see how the battle turns out now. Now, you can tell I'm frustrated because I opt to go for Risky Hyper Beam Strat, and I knock it out. I didn't do battle calculations or anything. You could see I hesitated for a second, but decided, you know what? Enough's enough. And we have two Pokemon left. Well, as per tradition, I miss with my first Blizzard versus Executor, but it goes for Barrage, which is the best case scenario. Blizzard hits, but it's not quite a one-hit KO, but it goes for Barrage again. Thank goodness they can't use potions before their turn like in other generations. It's actually quite nice knowing it's a guaranteed knockout, but Blastoise. It will it be a one-hit KO? Will I be frozen again or critical hit? The answer is it's a one-hit KO. Finally. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I, I don't. I mean... How do I even tier this Pokemon after what we just saw? I have to try and be objective and ignore the crazy luck that I got, but the truth is it's actually really easy to play Stratini. Looking at the level and the in-game time, it goes below Pikachu. As you saw, I reset every time I lost, so the in-game time was unaffected. It just took more real-world time. And I'm going to be honest, I'm pretty thankful that it's so obvious where Dratini should go because otherwise, I don't know how objective I could be. This was just one of the most insane, no. This was probably the most insane challenge. Not in terms of difficulty, not in terms of weird discoveries of glitches, but just in terms of the crazy bad luck I got throughout the run. I've never seen anything like that. But you know, when you play Pokemon for a living, which is thanks to you guys, I am so eternally grateful. You'll see stuff like this, and if you'd like to see more, then just remember to like, subscribe, I can't even get through that. Thanks for watching everyone, take care.